I'd like to welcome Mike Campbell and Mark Schutz to the stage. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's great to be at LiveWorks once again. Now, for some of you in the audience, I may be a familiar face. You may recognize me from uh, many years leading PTC's CAD strategy. So what on earth am I doing up here in the middle of the technology platform keynote? Well, for the past year, my team and I have been working on outstanding new capabilities that are going to allow you to get much more value out of your CAD data. These new tools will allow you to bridge the digital and physical worlds. They'll allow you to leverage the richness of 3D and the insight from IoT and present it all in the most compelling way imaginable through the power of augmented reality. Now, that's exactly what Jim and Terry showed you earlier on the gen set here. They used a new tool called Vuforia View. They scanned a thing mark. A thing mark is a specific example of the view mark technology that Jay just introduced. And that caused an experience to be delivered from the cloud specifically for them. Now, what they didn't show you is how that was built. Where did it come from? So you might be thinking, that was cool, could be pretty useful, but it's probably not something that you could do yourself. It's probably pretty hard, right? Well, Mark and I are here, and we are going to create much of what you saw in that demonstration. We're going to do it right now, and we're going to do it live. And when we're done, you're going to really understand how easy it is for you to leverage the 3D data that you already have, create and present animations, expose that IoT data, and deliver it all through the magic of augmented reality. Sound good? Let's get started. This is Vuforia Studio. This is a purpose-built tool for enterprise content creators just like you that want to create augmented reality experiences and don't want to write any code. Now, it might look familiar to other content creation tools that you've seen, but let me orient you. On the left-hand side here, we have various views and resources. The resources might include things like graphics files, CAD data. Next to that, we have some user interface widgets. These will be some of the elements in the experience. And on the right-hand side, we have properties and attributes. These are used to describe the various elements that will appear on the canvas. So the canvas is this large area in the middle. It's actually a 3D model space where you can work with 3D data. And Mark has already placed a thing mark on the virtual floor there. Now, the thing mark contains encoding, which is a specific identifier for this particular thing, and it links to a particular experience. And this one is exactly the one that's on the generator that Jim and Terry used earlier. Now, Mark is going to bring in the 3D data for the gen set. And as he does this, Vuforia Studio is actually optimizing the data so that it can be presented in augmented reality. Right? It's got to be presented on a mobile device and eventually digital eyewear. In this case, Vuforia Studio is reducing the data set. The original CAD data is being reduced by 150 times. And it's still preserving all of the visual accuracy. So you're going to have a compelling experience. Now, once the geometry is on the canvas, Mark's going to place it on the thing mark, put it exactly where he wants it, and he's going to give this experience a name. We're going to name this experience Easy, because it was pretty easy. And Mark's going to publish the experience to the cloud. Now, Mark could have named the experience anything, we chose to name it Easy, and when I pick up my iPad over here, you'll see my display in the middle in just a moment. Uh, and I've opened up, I'm actually going to open up Vuforia View, and Vuforia View is looking for a thing mark. And when I scan the thing mark here on the table, it's telling me there are a variety of experiences that are available for it. The bottom one there is the one that Mark just created. So when I select Easy, it's downloading that experience and downloading all of the associated data with that, uh, for that experience down to, the, down to the iPad here. And in just a second or two, you'll see that massive amount of CAD data that's been optimized for delivery in Vuforia View presented, on the, uh, presented inside of Vuforia View. 
Now remember, that was a huge amount of data. That original CAD data set is 1.2 gigabytes. It's been reduced to under 10 megabytes. And you know, again, there's a lot of network traffic in the room, as Jim mentioned. But there you see the gen set projected right on the tabletop. Now you've seen that this, is, this could be pretty interesting here at this size. And if I wanted to see it larger, I could ask Mark to scale it and republish it. Or I can simply go over here and use the mark that's on the floor. Boom, there it is, OK? Pretty, uh, pretty, pretty, uh, pretty realistic size. Now, you've seen the value in this for a sales and marketing scenario. Terry talked a little bit about that. But another great scenario is the design review scenario. So I've gone back in, and, I've, and I'm rescanning the code. And again, one of the other experiences you see here is the design review experience. This is one that Mark created a little bit earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and open this one out. And again, the data, is going to be, the data is going to be streamed down and loaded. Now, an ex a really valuable part of a design review is the collaborative aspect of it, right? It's interesting for me to be able to visualize the design at real size here. And you can see this is the engine, a potential engine inside of the gen set. There's a tremendous amount of detail there that I can see at life size. But I'd like to, I'd like to collaborate. In fact, I'm going to ask Jay to grab another iPad over there. Mark, can you give Jay the other iPad on the, on the shelf there? Jay's going to grab another iPad, and he's going to participate in the same experience. So while I'm looking at the design from this side, and you'll see my display in the middle screen, you'll also see what Jay's seeing from that side of the stage. All right, let's check this out. All right, there's the view, Mark, and there's the engine. But you know, Mike, that doesn't look like the engine it's in the gen set here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this button that says switch engine. And uh, OK, that looks more like it. Now let's see, uh, let's see if we can get a look at a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and tap on show housing. Aha. There's that air filter that was giving us some problems earlier. And I can look around, see the radiator also. And now I think I'll take it to the full product by tapping on this button that says show housing. All right. There it is, the full thing. Now, Mike, if you move over just a little bit further, I think I can get a good picture here for Facebook. Maybe just a little, <laughs> bit, more to your, little bit more to your left. Take a screenshot. Awesome. All right. Thank you, sir. Great. Thanks a lot, Jay. Thanks. Now, today, today um, you'll be able to see other, other use cases like this out in Extropolis in the design district. And uh, Euphoria Studio today supports many popular 3D file formats. And there are even more coming in another release before the end of the year. What this means is that every single one of you, regardless of the tools that you use in design and engineering, is going to be able to create really compelling 3D experiences like that using augmented reality in just a matter of minutes. So that was a great example of showing tabletop examples. There are some other examples too, right, Jay? Absolutely. You know, it's really powerful to take a digital version of the product and put it in the physical world. But what's even more powerful is if we can take digital information and put it on the physical product itself. That's right. That's right. And we've got some great capabilities that will help you do just that as well. Many of you in the audience may be familiar with a product called Creo Illustrate. But for those of you that are not, Creo Illustrate is a tool that's been purpose built for technical illustrators who want to prepare rich 3D content for consumption downstream to convey uh, sequences and uh, animations either in videos or in the form of 3D documentation. And it's really easy to prepare these step by step instructions. For example, like the one that you see here that shows how to perform a task using a 3D model presented on a computer screen. So we're going to use exactly the same technology. And we're going to author the air filter replacement sequence that's needed to address the issue that Jim and Terry showed earlier. We're going to use the same technology to author that sequence. But in this case, we're going to present that information on the physical product using augmented reality. So here we are on, Ma on uh, Mark's laptop, and we're working inside of Creo Illustrate. Now that's the whole gen set. We're actually going to focus in on the air intake, which contains the components that are needed for this particular procedure. 
Now the steps to the steps to open up the clips and remove the filter cap have already been authored. Those are there on the left-hand side. So Mark's going to go ahead and author the rest of the procedure pretty quickly here. You know, Mike, we have heard from Vuforia developers how painful it is to be able to create step-by-step -step instructions. But as I look at this with Creo Illustrate, this looks so simple. How is it so easy? Yeah, it is, it is really simple, Jay. Um, and the first reason that it's so simple is because it's got a really intuitive user interface. We've worked really hard to make it very, very easy to create these illustrations. Uh, it's, it, we've employed a drag and drop paradigm, so it's almost like PowerPoint for, for creating animations. But beyond the UI, there's another really important point here, and that is that many animation tools don't have a deep understanding of design data. They don't really understand individual components and product structure and the engineering intent behind components. Of course, with tools from PTC, we have a deep understanding of that, and that understanding can be reused and used effectively to communicate this knowledge out to the broader enterprise. Now, Mark has finished authoring this sequence. He's going to go ahead and save that in Creo Illustrate so that we can use it back in Vuforia Studio. And now, we'll switch back into Vuforia Studio. Okay, so now we see again the entire gen set here, but this time, most of that data that you see is just visual context that Mark needs while he authors the experience. Right? This use case is different. In this case, we're not going to project all of this geometry into reality. We're only going to project the subset that's interesting to us, the subset of data that's relevant to the procedure that we're trying to present. And what subset is that? Well. In the 3D properties here of this data, you'll now notice that there is a sequence associated with the data set. That sequence is the sequence that Mark just created in Creo Illustrate, okay? And because these tools are so tightly integrated, when Mark selects that sequence to be presented, Vuforia Studio and Vuforia View are intelligent enough that they will only display that subset of the components in the resulting experience. Now, there's another key point here, and that is that we want to see those animated parts projected onto the physical part itself. So that thing mark, we don't want that on the floor. We actually want that thing mark to be placed on the physical product. So Mark's going to drag it, and you'll see as he drags it, it intelligently mates to relevant flat surfaces. He's going to place that on the control panel in the very same location in the in the digital model as it is here in the gen set that's on the stage behind me. Okay, so as he, as he drags that, he's gonna scale that down, but there's, and, and we're almost done, but there's one more question to ask. How is somebody that's having this experience going to launch the sequence? Well, we need some user interface, right? So in addition to the 3D space where we've been working in the studio, there's actually also a 2D layer. You can think of this 2D layer as a pane where you can put user interface buttons and sliders and so forth that will all be presented in the experience in the actual pane of the glass, in, in, on the actual screen. So here we're going to add a, we've got a grid at the bottom, we're going to add a button. Mark's going to name that button play. And he's going to associate the action of clicking on that button so that it actually plays the sequence. So we're going to bind those things together. Now that he's done that, again, we're going to publish this experience back up to the cloud. We'll give it a name. We're going to call it Sequence this time, Mark. And again, here in Vuforia View, I'm scanning. And in this case, I'm scanning, I'm scanning the code, the thing mark on the device, on the physical product. And you see Sequence here at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and select that. Now, if I were a service technician or if I were a dealer that had to perform this operation, I might spend time looking through manuals and understanding text and diagrams and so forth. But thanks to these capabilities, I can simply use Vuforia View and browse for the relevant experiences and have that information presented in a way with no ambiguity, right? With a, with a lot of, with, with crystal clear visual clarity. Now you see, when I hit the play button, you'll see the air filter will, will highlight as if it's actually inside of the machine. I can see the clips opening, the cap coming off, and I see that I need to employ a rotating motion as I pull that filter out of the machine. 
Wow. <laughs> Guys, that is amazing. We have made one of the most powerful uses of AR fast and simple. You guys are going to make a lot of people very happy. You've also shown the incredible power that you've brought to the Vuforia platform by leveraging PTC's long-standing leadership and pedigree in 3D. But I think there's even more we can leverage, Mike. How could Studio use to be leveraged Thingworks? Yeah, so um, that's, uh, that's, that's a, it's a great question, Jay. And the good news is that Vuforia Studio is seamlessly integrated with Thingworks. And what this means is that it is really, really, really simple to create experiences that present IoT data for a connected product like the gen set here behind me. Now, earlier Terry showed you sensor data and frankly, information from other enterprise systems that is all exposed in ThingWorks presented in augmented reality. Let's do that, okay? So let's see how it's done. Back here in Vuforia Studio, Mark is going to place some virtual gauges, okay? Those virtual gauges are going to be placed by picking on a widget called 3D Sensor. And Mark is going to place those virtual gauges relative to the design where he wants them to appear in space. The virtual gauges will present information that's coming from real sensor data that's streaming off of the genset itself. Now, in order to access that sensor data, right here in the studio, Mark is going to navigate into the thing model that Joe introduced, the thing model for the generator. So here this is, you can think of this as a view into ThingWorks where we can navigate to the specific properties, again, the actual sensor values that we're interested in seeing. So what do we care about? Well, we care about making sure that the genset has enough fuel and that it's got enough of a charge on the battery that we can actually start it up. So Mark added each of those properties to the experience, and now what he's going to do is we're actually going to bind those values to the sensors. So we'll do, he'll do two things. The first thing he'll do is he'll change the display of the sensors, those virtual gauges. We have a broad palette of icons, and you can add your own, of course. And then for each one of those, he'll bind the value to be displayed in that gauge to the value that's actually streaming off of the sensors on the generator. Okay, again, we'll name this experience. We're going to call this one Sensors, and he's going to publish it. And here, as I, again, in the scanning environment, let's take a look. Sensors, all right, good. And again, now we're loading, we're, we're downloading that experience. And here, very quickly, we see those same icons that Mark just created, showing data in real time that's actually streaming off of the generator. Wow. That is great. Okay, so I want to point out that what Mark created there is actually quite scalable. He created an experience that said, go get sensor data for these values, these properties from whatever generator I'm looking at. If we had another generator with a different thing, Mark, we could have that information presented to us as well. In just a few minutes, Mike and Mark showed how easy it is to use Vuforia Studio to create experiences using 3D data you already have, create experiences with animated procedures and step-by-step -step instructions, and present IoT data from ThingWorks. And for those of you that want to create your own experiences, I'm thrilled to be able to tell you that these capabilities are now available in the form of a pre-production release. So Vuforia Studio pre-production is available, and if you're interested in trying it out, if you're interested in proving out these concepts, proving out the value that we've talked about here today, we'd love for you to be part of our Vuforia Studio pilot program. We hope you're really excited, like we are, about the progress that we've made with the Vuforia platform. We feel that we have made tremendous strides, and we cannot wait to get this technology in your hands and see what you do with it. So to get started, please visit Vuforia.com. And thank you so much for your time, and enjoy the show. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.